Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to take the next step in our recent video series where we talked about testing transformers. And we also discussed a method that is used for very expensive uh, industrial commercial transformers, and that is using a sweep frequency response analysis, also called SFRA. I encourage you to look at the previous videos in the series to find out what that's all about. Uh, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to start to figure out how we can build an automated SFRA tester, sweep frequency response tester. And you can see here on the bench, we've got one that is working right now. And I've got the transformer here that we're testing. I've got a function generator and I've got my oscilloscope. And as you can see here, what we're doing is we are sweeping the frequency of this function generator and applying that voltage, that sine wave, at various frequencies. And you can see it's starting at a low frequency and it's increasing logarithmically from about 100 hertz up to about 10 megahertz. And we're measuring the output of that. We're feeding the signal into this winding of a transformer and we're measuring the output voltage to see how it varies as you change the frequency. And that's indicative of a varying impedance of this transformer based on the changing inductance and capacitance of this transformer as you change the frequency. So you can see that the frequency is increasing and you can see the voltage is starting to drop because this at higher frequencies the impedance increases which means the output voltage is less and less and less and then as the frequency increases it starts to go up here. We're now up to about um, 2 megahertz and you can see it varies because of the interaction of the inductance and capacitance in this transformer. Impedance varies with frequency. And what you can do is you can use that with a new transformer. You, you plot the values of output voltage versus frequency, and that's kind of your fingerprint that you can use in the future after this has been in service to find out if has anything changed in the transformer. We've got this um, sweep frequency going and we're measuring it. And you can see here we've got the output uh, V peak to peak and it's going down to 1.2 volts. And the frequency is about um, 25 kilohertz. You can see it bounces all around. It's not very accurate on this scope. But the frequency is increasing. The voltage is bouncing. And what, what we'd like to do is we would like to automate that so it automatically measures the input frequency and the output voltage so we can plot a trace. So in this video, we're going to figure out how we can go about doing that uh, on the bench. So now, as we talked about in the previous videos, we're in LT Spice here, and this is kind of a visual depiction of the circuit that we're modeling our um, transformer SFRA test. And here we've got a simplified model of what is a very complex device, a transformer. There's a lot of internal capacitances we talked about and inductances and resistances. So I encourage you to look at the previous videos. Um, this is just a very simplified version. And we've got over here on the top left, we've got our signal generator, our function generator that's applying the sine wave in series with this power transformer winding. And we've connected up a 50 ohm output resistor and we're sending in the signal through this series uh, inductance and capacitance and resistance RLC circuit of the transformer winding. And we're going to be measuring on the scope the voltage across this resistor. And you can imagine as this in impedance of this winding changes, the output voltage is going to change and that's going to give us our fingerprint showing the response of the transformers to vary the frequency and we can use that as a fingerprint so any changes indicate something has changed in the transformer. Here are the basic steps we need to implement in order to do a sweep frequency response. Obviously we need to sweep the frequency of the signal generator, the waveform generator applying the sine wave. And then we need to measure the, the voltage coming out of the series circuit and record the values and plot them. As you see here, we've got voltage or voltage ratio versus frequency. So somehow we're going to have to duplicate this and we'd like to do it automatically rather than manually. 
So um, if we're going to sweep the frequency, as we said, we can do it manually like I did uh, in the previous videos. Adjust the frequency and then look on the scope and measure uh, the V peak to peak or whatever you want to measure on the output voltage. You, you might be able to use a multimeter too, um, and then we're going to have to write the values down. So manually, these are the steps. Um, also, as we mentioned, the, most of the signal generators or function generators might have what's a, called a sweep functionality where it will automatically, as we showed in the beginning of this video on the bench, it automatically sweeps the frequency over a range that you set. So we might be able to use that. Um, the problem is there, you, you still need to save those values as it sweeps the frequency. So we're somehow we're going to have to grab the values as it changes that and store it in our computer where we're going to, where we're going to be doing the plotting. We could also write some code to automate this process on our computer and save the values and do the plots. Now, as far as the other thing we have to do, measuring the, the voltage output, again, we can do it manually like I did before, read it on the scope or in the multimeter. Um, we could also maybe make a measurement circuit and connect it to some data acquisition device. Over here, you can see we've got an Arduino. Maybe we can make an, uh, use an Arduino or something like that to measure the V peak to peak. But we need to keep in mind it needs to work over a wide range of frequencies. Like if we're going to go 10 hertz to 10 megahertz, we need to have a device that's going to accept those values. So we got to be very careful. Uh, and we're going to also have to have a very fast sampling rate in order to capture peaks for like a 10 megahertz sine wave fed into our circuit. So is this really going to work? Maybe not. The other option is to write some code to get the V peak to peak measurement from the scope. Because keep in mind, this scope is measuring V peak to peak as we saw in the beginning. Um, maybe we can write some code to just grab that from the scope and use that as the measuring device and not have to worry about Arduinos or, or multimeters or whatever. So the plan is that I'm gonna do is I'm going to figure out how to automate the sweep frequency of the waveform generator, basically step this through these values. And to automate it, we're going to write some code to step through the frequency, measure the voltage, get the VPP measurement from the scope, ask the scope what's the V peak to peak, then go to the next frequency, get the V peak to peak, and then save those frequency and voltage values and plot them like that. So. What we're going to do in the next couple of videos is we're going to write some code to automate this entire process. And it'll be a great opportunity to figure out how can you program these devices, the scope and the function generator. And this will apply to just about any scope and function generator you have. How can you automate these devices so you can do things like this? Really very useful. So what we're going to do, we've got our function generator. We're going to um, connect it via USB. Here's our computer. Uh, it's going to set the frequency every second or two seconds or whatever. And then we're going to use the scope to measure the output voltage. And we're going to connect that scope to USB. And then internally, we'll just grab the frequency value that we set on the function generator and then read this V peak to peak. And we're going to plot this um, graph of the response. So in the next videos, we're going to start working on a program that will allow us to program this function generator. And the, the video after that, we're going to see how we can, for example, read voltage from our scope into our program on our computer. With both of those values, we're going to be able to plot this. So I encourage you to hang around, watch the next videos in the series. And if you like any of these videos, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. And most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.